G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And in today's video we are going to be breaking down the Bluey season 1 episode Calypso. This episode of Bluey is called Calypso. Which is of course our first introduction to Calypso the dog as well. And wow, just what an amazing character Calypso is and just so different as well I think to a lot of stereotype teachers that we've seen in a lot of other kind of kids shows or animation. So if you're new to my channel I love to do Bluey breakdown videos, Bluey theory videos, so if you like to check that out make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any of these videos let's get back to Calypso so as I said this is her debut episode alongside Pretzel, Indy, the Terriers and Rusty as well and Calypso is voiced by the amazing Megan Washington who is an Australian singer and has done some really amazing TED talks as well on how she actually had a stutter and how music and singing has helped her through that as well something also really cool with Calypso's design is that she is an Australian shepherd so perfect she's a herding dog and she herds the children throughout this episode and just in general as a teacher. So I feel like that was the perfect type of dog to make a teacher. And there's also this theory that maybe Calypso is magic or magical or fey, something like that. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of this video. So the next thing that of course I want to bring up is the school. So this is the first time that we get to see Bluey's school. It is based on a real life Steiner school in Brisbane that Joe Brum's daughters went to. But something of note is in real life in Brisbane, the Steiner school is close by to sort of the Red Hill Paddington area where we know Bluey's house is located. But in the show, Bluey's school is actually in the Glasshouse Mountains, which is a one hour drive away from Paddington and Red Hill. So that could always be why they may be running late is because that's a really long drive for them to get to. Something else with the school is you might notice that there's gnomes everywhere. They're talking about gnomes, they're singing about gnomes, the gnomes are just all over the place. And that's because Steiner schools in real life actually have a really big gnome philosophy, I guess it is, is to help teach about the environment and empathy with the environment and what's around you. But that's an actual real world thing and that's why we constantly see gnomes throughout Bluey's house and in Bluey's school as well. There are of course some really cute dog details in the school as well. There's little dog bones cut out of the benches as well as on Calypso's table too. The next thing I want to talk about though is the music. And a lot of people when they saw this episode were reminded of the movie Babe and that's because the same classical music is used in both of them. It is Saint Sans Symphony number no. three. We can hear it in the episode and it is quite beautiful. Okay. <laughs> But I think the song that most people get stuck in their head is the gnome song that Calypso sings. Sister rain has left and father sun is home. Brother wind comes blowing in to welcome home the gnome. That song was actually made up on the spot by Megan Washington while she was doing this. But as of this year in April, it will be available with the full lyrics and like as a full song in the Bluey album number two, Dance Mode. Brother wind is warm, sister rain is pouring a sudden summer storm. Now, the fourth Easter eggs that I want to look into and sort of other references to things around the world is Honey's Gnome Village. Every single little scene represents something. So in the very first scene, we can actually see the Loch Ness Monster from Scotland in the lake. And even next to it is the little island with Urquhart Castle, which is of course in Loch Ness as well in Scotland. And then in the second scene, we can see what I think is like an homage to the episode The Creek, which is coming up in future episodes in Bluey in season one. But this is where we start to see some of the kids in the village. So we see a fisherman there with an actual fish and this of course represents Pretzel and what his role is currently in the classroom. The next scene we see a fish and chip shop so it's got a fish at the top. We see a little chef which is of course Bluey as well as two customers which is Coco and Chloe. The next scene we see a market scene and we see some mums there carrying their babies in like the little wraps as well which again is replicating what the other girls around Honey are playing at that time. And then we get the iconic road crossing which of course straight away is what I noticed. It was from the Beatles Abbey Road is a famous photograph and people constantly replicate it. But something even more unique about this is it's obviously Calypso and the three terriers. So the adult there has a little like blue gnome scarf just like Calypso and then we've got three identical little gnome doggies following her which of course replicate the terriers. The next little fun details are all to do with Chloe. Now Chloe does say while she's holding her baby that she's been up all night, didn't sleep last night which is exactly what her mum says to Bandit in the episode Wagon Ride. So obviously Chloe's listening to this and repeating what she 
hears at home. But something else that Chloe has is that she's called her little baby Roderick. And this is a 101 Dalmatians live movie reference. So in the live movie, the nanny calls Roger Roderick instead of Roger. And I feel like this is just a really funny callback to that. We also see in future episodes more 101 Dalmatian references with Chloe, especially in the episode Octopus. The next group of kids I want to focus on though is the Terriers. And they've got some really fun historical references. We're Romans! So the Terriers are not invading Romans. And this is actually kind of funny because of course the Terriers are based on Scottish Terriers. But of course in real life, in our history, the Romans did try to invade Scotland, but they never were able to conquer it. Being protecting Roman is a little bit boring. Maybe we should be invading Romans. So it's just kind of funny that like, you know, Terriers, Scotland, Romans, that that's sort of all mixed in together. But of course they do even have like the actual laurel wreath sigil that you saw with SPQR in the past. So we've got that Roman history aspect there. The Terriers obviously are watching a lot of Roman documentaries, but then they also say tortoise formation. <laughs> which was a very common formation of the Roman Legion whenever they were going into battle. Now, we do also have some just little Australian Easter eggy references and details in the episode. We see gum nuts, which are very Australian. We have the fish and chip shops, which honestly, as an Australian living in America, I'm devastated that there are not more fish and chip shops here. I miss that so much. We also have Coco calling her baby a cheeky dog. We do also have a couple of subtitle errors in the ABC Australia version. They call Coco Cuckoo. They have Indy's name spelt with an I not a Y and they also have Polly called Polly. And we do have at least one traditional Easter egg though in this episode and that is our long dog. It is in Rusty's play area and is just a green long dog there. Nothing extra special about it but have you managed to find the two long dogs and the hidden Chattermax in the background of my video yet? If you have make sure you leave a comment down below saying where you found them. And the last thing we're going to talk about of course is knitting and Calypso and magic. Now, there's a bit of an idea that maybe Calypso is a little bit magical because of course in real life, no teacher could just be chilling out, weaving some yarn while the kids play all nice and perfectly. Like that just, as someone who was a teacher, like that just doesn't exist. It doesn't matter how good your kids are. They aren't all ever gonna be playing perfectly like that. So that's where the idea is that maybe she's actually like weaving a spell as she's weaving those threads to keep everyone calm, to get them more connected and linked together. Because at the very end of the episode, we do see her holding up a red woven bracelet, which straight away for me reminded me of either the Kabbalah bracelet or just the red good luck bracelet you see in a lot of different cultures and religions. And of course, something really special about those is that they signify, you know, a lot of spiritual stuff, a lot of good luck charms, as well as connection. And that is what this whole episode is about is how everyone's individual play is actually all connected together. Even Honey, who's off by herself, she's creating everyone's play in a little village by herself. Of course, we have the fish and chip shop that has no fish, so we need Pretzel who's fishing. We also need someone to work at the fish and chip shop. So we have Indy helping out to earn money so that she has somewhere to stay because it's too cramped, the three mums living together. So it is just like this beautiful thing that Calypso is the one sort of helping them all connect by just like mentioning little things to them, but also she's showing that connection in what she's weaving as well. So for me, this episode is definitely a five out of five. I think it's just so beautiful and so unique and such a fun episode to see how, what an ideal society would be through play, which is exactly what Joe Brum said actually. This was one of his favorite episodes and he wrote like a letter to Bluey fans and said that, yeah, this would be what ideally society would be like, where we all are just able to naturally interact with each other and help each other out. Yeah, that would be beautiful. But overall, the music as well is 10 out of 10. It's absolutely gorgeous. But let me know in the comment section down below, what would you give this episode out of five long dogs? And what was your favorite thing about this episode as well? But until my next video, I have put you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah. Bye.